Let's have a look at how to make your school assessment tasks fairer for children with phonological dyslexia. So this is a bit of a, a landmine issue, really, because so many schools, people get very uptight as soon as you start talking about modifying things to make it easier for children with phonological dyslexia. But it's important to keep in mind that assessment tasks need to assess a child's skills at whatever they're being assessed on. So if you're assessing maths, assess maths. If you're assessing someone's science skills, assess their science skills. You don't want for your children who have phonological dyslexia for every task to be a test of their math skills plus their reading skills or their science skills plus their reading skills because the children without phonological dyslexia, they're not being tested on their reading. So it's important to keep that in mind that, you know, making tasks fairer for children with phonological dyslexia is about making it so that it's not all dependent on their, their reading skills or their written skills. First thing to keep in mind is children with phonological dyslexia need all the extra time that you can give them to pre-read an assessment task before they do it. So you can do that just for your children who have uh, clear phonological dyslexia, or if you want to make sure that everything appears fair, you can make sure that your whole class gets a whole heap of time to uh, to pre-read an assessment task. And all that is, it's just a matter of giving the class 15 minutes before they get started on their test to read through all the tests, make sure they understand what's being asked of them. It's fair as long as the other children are allowed to do it. Something else um, with, with that is that a lot of teachers will say, oh, well, let's print the test out on coloured paper for the whole class. Well, that's great for the kids with visual stress, and it's a practice you should be doing. It's a fantastic idea, but that's not actually going to help the kids with phonological dyslexia, because remember, their issue is not about coloured paper. Their issue is about interpreting text and seeing the text, having the text make meaning for them. So, you know, so many things you can do here. Another helpful thing is to when you give your class the test or the assessment task, is to actually read the task with them. Now, you don't want to be so overt about it if you've got, say, you know, year 8, 9, 10. You don't want to be completely overt about, yeah, I'm just reading this through just in case you can't read it. Don't, don't be like that. But you do want to give them the assessment task and then talk them through each question. Make sure they understand it because all of a sudden you've unlocked the test. You've made it so it's possible for the children with phonological dyslexia to do just as well as their peers because they now understand exactly what's required from them without having to read and then comprehend what, what, what's there in front of them. Another thing to consider is to offer alternate ways of assessing students. Now, it's pretty standard that, you know, if, if the class has got to write an essay, well, you give them the assessment task, you give them the essay question, hopefully they'll do it. If, if you're lucky, they'll do it and hand it in. And then, and then, yeah, been there, done that, solved, and you just mark it. Well, it doesn't have to be like that because you can actually offer alternatives. You see, a lot of your children who have phonological dyslexia, the thought of writing an 800-word essay, it's like asking you or I to write 20,000 words. Yeah, we can do it, but really, do I, do I have to, you know? So you can offer alternate ways of doing it. One way is to give your children the option of handing in their essay in an audio file. Now, that's not hard at all because for an audio file, all they need to do is record themselves talking on their phone. It's not exactly like you need some amazing technology. Or another way is to have your child hand in their assessment task as a speech, as a, an oral presentation that they can just record on their mobile phone. So that's not hard. You just get them to put their mobile phone on the wall with some blue tack on it uh, to hold it in place. And they record themselves giving their, their speech or their presentation, and then they, they can hand in that file. Easy. It's not hard at all. So creating assessment tasks that uh, don't just have to be written, where the children know that their spelling is just going to let them down, they're going to struggle to pass, um, but to give them the option of handing in their file as an audio file or as a, a video file, it is a, a fantastic way of doing this. Now, most of us if we do that, we fear that then the whole class is going to submit, you know, a video that took them five minutes to do. Well, there's ways you there's ways around that. You can actually make the task more demanding, more rigorous if it's done by audio or by video. Uh, that's going to discourage uh, children from using it as a cop out and make sure that the options there for children with phonological dyslexia, but it's not suddenly the option that your whole class is doing. Another thing to consider is why are we giving all these. Uh, why are we giving so many written assessments to our to our classes? If you're, say, a year eight English teacher and 
you, you've really got to look at, well, why do I give out to my class four essays per semester? Really, I'm actually assessing the same thing four times. That makes no sense at all. Why not make one of them an essay, one of them you know, a speech, one of them a poster or chart they have to produce? Because the days of producing every assessment task to be an essay, those days are over. That's not how the real world works. And in your school, you may not have the influence to suddenly in an instant change how your school does assessment, but you can have some impact. You can have some influence because we do not need to be disadvantaging all our children with phonological dyslexia by making every task an essay. Now, I want to talk you through a tip that can work if you are in a school where the culture is really quite adverse to children with phonological dyslexia. Now, I'm, I'm aware that probably half of you who are doing this course are doing it because you're frustrated that your school just is not interested in helping these children or is not proactively putting things in place. And for some of you, as soon as you start talking about modifying assessment tasks or giving children extra time because they've got phonological dyslexia, really, you're not asking much, extra time. It's, it's, it's just straightforward. It's not a big ask. But some of you, you're worried that you're going to be shot down by other teachers when you ask for this. Well, one way around that is to have it so that your assessments are timed so that they, when they finish, the children are off to lunch or the children are off to recess and you give the entire class the option that, you know what, if you want to read over your exam again or if you want to um, just finish it off, I'm going to sit here and have my lunch right here so that you've got time to do that. Now, what that's going to mean is that most of the class, they finish their their assessment task and they're out the door, they're gone, which is great, no trouble at all. But the kids in your class who have phonological dyslexia, well, they've got time. They've got time on their side to, to read through their work, to actually take the time to proofread it. Sometimes they, they get penalised so badly in tests because they haven't had time to proofread their work and then they get marked down terribly for it, demotivates them for the next test. Whereas if you just time your test so that the test finishes right on the bell, right when the children are supposed to leave. But if anyone does want to hang around, finish off their exam or just go over it, completely welcome to. It can make all the difference. Really, with this, uh, with this segment of the course, I'm not giving you these ideas because I want you to just go and implement every one of them. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you that there are ways to create and think through ideas that will help your own class in your own situation. Okay, because if I literally wanted to make some list of 40 things that you could do to make life easier for the children in your class with phonological dyslexia, I could do that. But at the end of the day, that's not what you need. What you need is to be able to see opportunities, recognize them, seize those opportunities and implement them, make them relevant to your kids in, in your class. So I encourage you to just take a moment to have a think. Think of what you can do to make it so that children with phonological dyslexia are not disadvantaged in assessment tasks. And really, most of the time, it's going to come down to making sure that it's not relying on their reading skills and that they have all the time they need. If, if you give them more time, you'll find that their results improve rapidly.